Welcome to Education Forum. I'm Herman Badillo, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the City University. The improvement of education affects all New Yorkers. This program will focus on the key educational issues and challenges before us all. My guest today is Assemblyman Edward Sullivan, who is the Chairman of the Assembly Committee on Higher Education, the most important committee uh, for us at the City University. Assemblyman Sullivan is a graduate of the New School University, and he has uh, spent a great deal of time in education. Uh, he taught English as a second language. He has been uh, a professor at the City University and NYU, and he was elected to the Assembly uh, from the Upper West Side uh, first in 1976. Uh, welcome to our program, Assemblyman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I, and I want to thank you particularly for inviting me on to discuss the, the matters of City University. Well, yeah, we need to do that because uh, this is an important year, and uh, we'd like to know, first of all, uh, how does the budget look for the City University this well, year? I think the budget looks pretty good for the City University, uh, Mr. Chairman. We, we have uh, put in, uh, we in the Assembly, <clears throat> and we're speaking now as the budget is ongoing, so by mm -hmm. tomorrow this may have changed, right? But we in the Assembly... Hopefully have, it changed for the better. I, I yeah. hope so, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We in the Assembly have put in a, a good deal of money for, um, for full-time faculty. Uh, hiring because uh, there is a feeling that uh, the ratio between full-time and part-time faculty in city university and in state university in some campuses well, the, is out of whack. The biggest complaint we get uh, is that we have too many adjunct professors, mm -hmm. which is not your fault or mine. This problem came up uh, during the fiscal crisis in the 70s where we, the city university, was forced to institute tuition, which neither you nor I wanted, and uh, we, they were forced to cut uh, the, uh, the faculty, and since then we have not really gotten the funds to do more than have adjuncts, so we appreciate every penny we can get to uh, put in full-time faculty. The, the State Assembly uh, has uh, put in a good deal of money. We, we put in last year $14 million for both SUNY and CUNY full-time faculty hiring. This year we propose to triple that amount right. to $42 million. And not only that, but to increase it every year for the next five years, so it'll end up in the mid-60s in terms of millions of dollars. And uh, we feel that will be an, a, a statement to the world that we intend to have full-time professors teaching our youngsters. Of course, adjunct, I was an adjunct. Incidentally, I was not a professor, I was an adjunct professor, mm -hmm. which is fine. But uh, adjuncts do a very good job, but the bulk of the of a department's staff has to be full. -time. No, because the adjuncts may do a good job when they're teaching, but the students need people who will be available all the time, who will meet with them, who will give them advice, especially our students uh, at the community colleges, because those are students who aren't yet sure what they want to do, and they need someone who will guide them and orient them. My advice always is to get your education out of the way as fast as possible, but they need to hear a professor drumming this into, into their heads. Well, yes. I, yeah. well, that's not always possible for some no, no, people, but you I mean, know. But but uh, I I uh, I I think that the 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 necessity of having advice from full-time faculty members who are around to give advice is uh, is essential to the students because many of our students here at City University have very complicated lives. Uh, there was a time when you went to college between ages 18 and 22. That's no longer the case, as you know. The average age of CUNY is somewhere in the high 20s. Mm -hmm. And uh, many uh, students have children of their own. Right. Uh, sometimes they're married. Sometimes they're married and divorced. Sometimes they're starting a new career. All kinds of permutations are there. So it's very, very useful to have people who can help them focus on their educational right. problems. Okay. Now, um, we also have a problem because of the things you said, that because many of them have um, long since graduated from high school mm -hmm. uh, and they're just coming back to college, they have to uh, take uh, remedial courses at the community colleges. And the problem that we have there is that the, there's a tuition assistance plan because so many <coughs> of the students are poor and uh, the tuition assistance plan is limited so some of them use up their tuition assistance in remedial courses and then they can't afford to complete their courses. Well, how do we help them there? Well, here's how we can do that. Uh, in 1995, 
uh, the governor unfortunately chose to eliminate the supplemental tap, uh, STAP as we sometimes yeah. call it. And that was the tap that would be there available for those students who had to use up some of their tap money with remedial courses and then came to the senior year and didn't have any more uh, tap available. STAP will supply that. We have put in an amount this year for supplemental TAP. That will increase over the years to be $20 million. And I hope, Mr. Chairman, that you'll call your friend the governor uh, who, and ask him to support that when we go into the negotiations, which well, is coming I, up. I, That's I, your homework assignment, if you no. don't mind me saying so, because we need the governor's support of STAP this no, time No, I've around. always supported that, as Good. you know. What about the state senate? They the state senate, I think, will support it if, uh, you know, how things go with bargaining. The STAP will be our item, then they'll want an item. Uh, I'm not sure that I will disagree with them. I think they're probably something they will want, I will be accommodating for, uh, uh, toward, rather. So uh, I think that we can get STAP. And not only that, we're going to, to expand, and very shortly we will have part-time TAP. A part-time right, TAP right. means that TAP will be distributed in a rational way rather than now in an irrational way. Part-time TAP will be credit-based. As you take credits, you get the TAP for the credits you need. So that if you have a full-time job and two children and want to go to school part-time, you will still be TAP eligible if we succeed in our efforts. So the part-time TAP, is that in the current uh, That bill? will be in there too, yes. And we're expanding it not only to CUNY, which has already taken some initiatives with a pilot program, very successful. And guess what it costs the state of New York? Nothing. Because those students who drop down mm -hmm. from 12 credits, which they don't really want anyway, down to six credits will save us the money that we'd, we can then apply to the new students who come in uh, and are taking are going to college who didn't think they would be able to. So it, it's a financially it's a wash. Everybody benefits. The students benefit. The taxpayers benefit. Everybody benefits. So we think it's going to be a very good program. So between those two things, the students that you're worried about, the, the students who have to take remedial courses, mm -hmm. uh, will be able to get through college in a rational way. We certainly hope. Now, you mentioned there about the negotiating process. Now, yeah. I've, I'm, I've, <coughs> I'm told that uh, Assemblyman Silber has changed the structure for negotiation, because in the past, it was only three people in Albany who did the negotiating, the Speaker and the uh, Senate Majority Leader and the Governor. But now, supposedly, the chairman of the committees, like you, are supposed to be more involved. Is that is that last year? I, last year, yes, yes, you're correct. Uh, last year, I was chair of a conference committee where I and uh, uh, Senator Laval, who's the chairman of the Senate Higher Education Committee, uh, each chaired groups that met together, and together we negotiated the higher education aspect mm -hmm. of the budget within the money that the larger committee, I referred to it uh, with the tongue-in-cheek as the Central Committee, uh, then told us how much money we had to deal with, and then we negotiated that amount of money. Well, that's the way it should be. That's the way we did it in Congress, yes. you know, that the chairman of the committee are the ones who negotiate for their particular purpose. It does spread the uh, decision-making a little bit, and I think that's to the, to the benefit of everybody. Now, will that create problems for us? Because, as, as you know, uh, in view of uh, the decision of a Supreme Court judge who said that the uh, mandate of the legislature to increase the funds for the public schools by maybe uh, two billion dollars uh, by September 15th. There's a lot of pressure uh, to provide huge amounts of money to just the elementary and secondary education budget. The assembly has come up, uh, Mr. Chairman, with a budget that accomplishes what the judge asked us to accomplish over a two-year period. That is to say, with the end of two years, we will have accomplished, first of all, New York City will get its fair share at long last. Uh, it will get uh, just a tad more than, than its percentage will, 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 the, will the upstate assemblymen <coughs> agree? Because the problem, uh, as you know, it wasn't you. It was the problem was the upstate Some people. of them will. Some of them won't, no yeah. doubt. But it, we think we have uh, enough. Uh, we're giving enough to upstate districts that, in the end, they will agree. That's the political process, of course. And so we think that we can do the things I mentioned regarding uh, full-time faculty, regarding opportunity programs, which we haven't had a chance to talk about, regarding supplemental TAP. We can do all those things and more and still give the, the elementary and secondary schools the money that the judge very wisely uh, ordered us to do. The governor is uh, uh, appealing the ruling of the judge. I disagree with the governor, but in any event, the assembly is going 
forward, whether the appeal succeeds or not, no, no. we're going forward as if there were no appeal, no, the, and we're going to we're going to uh, 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 make sure that the the young people in elementary and secondary school do have the funds that they need. The the, uh, the fact that the governor appealed does not prohibit the legislature exactly. from putting additional funds. Exactly. So we're going forward anyway. Uh, the governor appealed on a on a. Uh, a constitutional basis of separation yeah, of powers, yeah, yeah. which really doesn't have anything to do with education. We're, we're going ahead to make sure that the educational aspect is addressed, uh, this budget. Now, when you provide additional funds for elementary and secondary schools, mm -hmm. do you target them to a specific cause, or do you simply provide additional uh, millions of dollars? Well, you know, that brings up an issue that some, we might disagree with, well, uh, that's Mr. Chairman. I, like uh, the, I think that it's not a good idea for politicians to get too involved in the targeting of money. Now, uh, we have a situation in, in state university, not city, but state university, <clears throat> where <clears throat> we were told by the chancellor of the uh, state university that we had no nothing to do with the colleges of state university. We, the legislature, that fund them. I think it was an you know, unfortunate turn of phrase. So we are targeting the money we are giving to the state university because we don't, I don't feel that even a politician as smart as myself should not interfere with elementary and secondary education and should not interfere even with higher education. That is why we have boards of trustees. I disagree with the mayor when he says, put it under my yeah, control. But, but don't you provide specific money for uh, pre-kindergarten programs? Oh, yes, yeah, things like yeah, that. But we yeah. don't say that you have to have the core curriculum okay. this way or that way. Uh, there are things that everybody agrees upon. Everybody agrees upon transportation. Everybody agrees upon lunch and things like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about trying to skew the education this way or that way. We want to avoid doing that. And that's why I feel it's a very good idea to have independent boards of trustees, independent uh, 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 boards of education. Uh, I think they should be independent. If the mayor of the city of New York can't convince the board of education or a few members of the board of education, you know, why is he the mayor of the, of the city of New York? He's a powerful guy. He should be able to convince one or two people well, to see it his well, way. We can disagree, but the issue is what is independent. If the other members of the board of education are appointed by other elected officials like the borough presidents, yeah. then obviously they're not independent. So that that's Well, the, I hope they would the, be. Well, no, because they, <coughs> they, the, the basic point is uh, that the mayor is talking about is that you got uh, six different elected officials making the appointments, and he thinks it should be the mayor and the city council. The, but the mayor's can, got a lot to do already. Yeah, he really yeah. has a lot to do, and getting involved in education. And Harold Levy, of one of the most one of the most brilliant men I've ever met in my life is having some difficulty running the Board of Education. For the mayor to run the police department and the traffic and, and the uh, uh, land use and the Board of Education, I think is biting off more than he, any mayor can do. He shoot. does a great job with the police department and the other ones, but we'll continue, we'll talk after, about that in another continue program. after these <laughs> announcements. Yeah. Do you think you have the power to change the world? I can shape the future, one child at a time. I know I can make a difference in those children's lives, and I know I have. Who knows where my influence may stop? I teach. I teach. I teach. Yes, they're teachers, but to the kids they reach, they're heroes. I think I have the power to change the world. The influence is always there. Do you have the power to wake up young minds, to be someone's hero, to change someone's life? Reach for that power. Teach. If you want to make an impact on our future, call 1-800-45-TEACH. Want to change the world? I teach. I teach. I teach. I teach. I teach. I teach. Be a teacher. Be a hero. We're back today with Assemblyman Edward Sullivan, Assemblyman from the Upper West Side in Manhattan and chairman of the uh, Committee on Higher Education and the Assembly. You said that the budget provided some additional funds 
for opportunity programs. What are those? <clears throat> well, uh, here at CUNY, SEEK and, and College Discovery are the two opportunity programs. Opportunity programs, as I'm sure you know, Mr. Chairman, take students who are the first in their family ever to go to college mm -hmm. and who might find certain circumstances in college a little unnerving to them because it's a new uh, world for them. And they can't go back to their mother or father and say, what do I do now? Because their mother and father have, have not had that experience. So uh, uh, SEEK, for example, let's take that as an example, uh, uh, provides a kind of family on the campus where the students can go and say, I have this problem or I have that problem, not sure which course I should take, uh, and other things that come up. And uh, I think it's been a wonderful job. There are many cases, and I know uh, some people feel that their, their graduation rate uh, was not high at one point, but you know, they measured their graduation rate too quickly. I know you feel people should get out of college as soon as they can, but not everybody does that. So if you give them six years or eight years, to go through college, uh, at the end of that time, you'll find a very fine graduation rate from the SEEK program, and so it does a good job. Listen, I, I, uh, the SEEK program was written by uh, Julius Edelstein, Shirley Chisholm, and me. And uh, Julius Edelstein, who became the Vice Chancellor Emeritus in his apartment on Western Avenue. So uh, I've always been in support of that program. Well, I'm glad you are, because we're funding it. Uh, we're adding 23% uh, uh, over what last year's number was. The governor tried to cut it, but we're just going to ignore that. We're going to add 23% over last year, and then we're going to add an amount every year for five years to make sure that the SEEK program not only is properly funded, but keeps ahead of inflation. And that's the SEEK program is in the four-year colleges. Then you yeah. have the college. college discovery, the same thing yeah. in the community colleges, where, where the same function is performed. And uh, we find that these programs keep people in college. You know, if someone's going to go to college and we're going to spend the effort and the money to try to keep them in college, we might as well make sure we succeed. And that's what SEEK does. And I, so I'm very much in favor of it. Uh, I, I'm one of those people who believe that when I came to New York City as a young man, nobody gave me a test. Nobody said, can you make it in New York? They put me down on 58th Street and, and 9th Avenue and said, uh, do the, they? I mean, I put myself down there, and and, uh, and they said, do the best you can. Well, that's what I think New York is all about. Give it a shot, and I think that's what CUNY, which is the child of New York City, should be all about. Let's get those people in there. Let's give them a chance to do what they can. Listen, when you came to New York City, you were lucky because you could speak English. When I came, I couldn't speak English at all, so I understand the problem, but they did, especially they apropos of the, of the new census, which uh, now reveals that we have a huge uh, migration, more than anyone had thought of, uh, of uh, Hispanics and, uh, and Asians. Thank uh, God for yeah, it, yeah. because I think they're going to transform New York. New York is not a static thing. New York City is a, is a constantly changing city. And, and City University should be a constantly changing university. The aspect of City University should be constantly changing to go along with New York City, which, which is its parent. And so uh, that's why I, I'm, you know, I know we disagree when uh, you said that all the remedial should take place here rather than there. I think it's good, very good, for some of the accelerated students to be in, in the same corridors, in the same lunchrooms, in the same classrooms in some cases, as students who are not so accelerated in their coursework because we learn from each other. Students learn from each other almost as much as they learn from the teachers. And that's why we have to have this wonderful mix in City University no, so that they will. But what worries me is uh, the, dropout, the dropout rate at CUNY, and by the way, it's not just the dropout rate at CUNY, it wor what worries me even more is the dropout rate from high school, which is uh, that's a very enormously problem, high. Yes. And that's why uh, <coughs> I've been working to develop why I, what I call the, the modern SEEK program, and that is the College Now program, where we at the City University begin to work with the students in the ninth grade in high school to make sure that they don't drop out. And we would like to have more money in the budget for that course. Well, if the assembly has its way, you will get more money okay. for the College Now program, a wonderful program started by Leanne Goldstein out of Kingsborough Community College. And, and we're, ho we're hoping to give you more funding 
for the college now. But the important thing is to keep those doors open. Open doors is what New York is all about. Uh, the, the Statue of Liberty is what New York is all about. And open doors and the Statue of Liberty should be what CUNY is all about. So we should say, come on in, give it a chance. If you don't speak English well enough, we'll help you speak English. If your, your math is not up to speed, we'll help you bring it up to speed. That's what we want CUNY to be all about. That's why we had some disagreements in the past couple of years. But I think now things are settling in. Hopefully they're settling in. And we'll get back to the time when CUNY is open uh, and, and, the, and the welcome. I walked in the door today of this building, this beautiful building, which I helped to yep, uh, yep. secure, as you may know. I was accused. That's on 34th Street and 5th Avenue. Exactly. That's, right. that's where the Graduate Center is, and that's where the CUNY TV is. I was accused by Cranes New York of being a real estate wheeler dealer because I was able to do this. I don't think I'm a real estate wheeler dealer. There's no, there's no, uh, that's no tragedy in New York City to <laughs> right, be accused of that. <laughs> but but uh, I walked in the door, and, it, and they have this beautiful information desk there, which I think is a brilliant step. And I just wish one thing were there, a big banner up there saying, welcome. Just oh, yeah, welcome. Yeah. No, listen. In fact, I'll see if I can get that funding into the budget, and, and yeah. you can put a, a big, be a beautiful purple banner up there. No, but you know, uh, in, in terms of our disagreements, what... I've been trying to accomplish is to bring about more students graduating in a way that they can perform. And as you know, uh, we've put in now a um, dean for teacher education mm -hmm. because you were a teacher and you remember one of the problems we had was that many teachers would get a degree in education, then they couldn't pass the teacher's exam. Yep. So now we're ensuring that they uh, get a degree in education that enables them to pass the exam. And now here at the Graduate Center, we have a PhD in education, which we never had before. Well, that's good. That, that isn't just opening doors, but ensuring that uh, they can be propelled into the modern society. Let me tell you about one other thing we're trying to get in the budget, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, here at the Graduate Center. We want to establish a Nelson Mandela Chair for good. International yeah. Studies. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, I find that he, that he is one of the most uh, important people, if not the most important right. people in the second half of the 20th century, right. uh, leading his country to freedom and, and leading all of us to understand how transitions can, be, can occur without bloodshed, which right. is what has happened pretty much in, in South Africa. So I think he's a great model for all of us. So we're going to try to establish the Nelson Mandela Chair for International Studies here at the Graduate Center. Good. And you're also trying to establish uh, some other uh, things, for example, at Medgar Evers College. Yes, we want to... Tell us about that one. We're, well, we're going to put some, uh, uh, give some money. There was a dispute about whether the city or the state should fund uh, a certain aspect of building. Yes, that. I know. That's we, a we, uh, that's dispute is silly because it, it, was, it doesn't matter. It was delaying everything. Yeah, and so we, yeah. we in the state have said, look, we'll put in the money. Uh, we'll, we'll end the dispute. We'll put in the money. We'll argue later. But now construction can can begin at Medgar Evers. Medgar Evers is a wonderful college, I feel, because... Mm -hmm. It, uh, it wasn't supposed to succeed. It was supposed to be like a handout uh, type of college, and it's succeeding wonderfully. It has become the, the college of choice of many, many people in, uh, in New York City uh, who want to go to college. And, and it doesn't really have a campus. You know, we have some beautiful it's campuses, gotta have a, it's gotta but have it's a just a, an old building. But it will, it, with this money, hopefully it'll be transformed into a better campus. And I, and I know that there'll be, there'll be days coming. It's a new college, of course, but there'll be days coming when people will boast. I'm a graduate of, of Medgar Ever College with a great deal of pride. That's already probably occurring, and, uh, and it'll occur more and more as these people, as the graduates of Medgar Evers get older and older and start to hit their stride in their 40s and 50s and show just what a wonderful education they received there. Okay, now you have some other programs that you have developed, right? <clears throat> well, we have, uh, let, let's go into a couple of graduate yeah. TAP, uh, which we're uh, trying to mm -hmm. uh, uh, add to, we're going to double the amount of money that graduates will receive in, in form of TAP. We've got a, what I call... Uh, what, what do they receive now? They receive $550. Mm -hmm. They're going to receive $1,100. And that will be for all graduate courses? All those that qualify. Including yep. the ones here, and would, would that include the law school as well? Yes, all graduate okay. students that qualify for TAP. Yeah, this yeah. is not for everybody, but yeah. for those who qualify for TAP, and that's hard enough when you're a graduate student. I wish we could adjust the the, uh, the qualification standards, and maybe we can do that next year. I hope we can do that next year. But this year we concentrated on getting the amount up, up as high as we could. Okay. Now, another problem that we have with the budget is that 
we always get a budget for one year only, and that makes it difficult to plan. Well, we've uh, addressed that problem. Yeah, tell us. We're going to put a five-year, uh, a bud I, I suggested a five-year budget for higher education. Uh, the speaker, uh, who's probably wiser than I, that's why he's the speaker and I'm not, suggested why don't we do it for some of the items. So, for example, for the faculty initiative, it'll be five-year. For the opportunity programs, it'll be five-year. For the supplemental TAP, it'll be five-year. And incidentally, for community colleges, it'll be five-year, and I forgot to mention that. Community colleges will receive a tremendous boost this year, and that will go up to the point where the state will be paying 40%, 40% of the cost of educating a student at community colleges, which will lower, the, 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 in this case, the cities uh, put in, and will lower the student put in, down to 30% each. So that will be a big benefit. That will also be a five-year program. Okay, I got another item that I would like to include as a five-year program. Sure. How about a five-year program of not increasing tuition at CUNY? Well, I don't know if I can get them for five years, yeah. but we're not. We haven't increased it for the last five years. Yeah. And I, uh, somebody said, why don't we have a predictable tuition policy? Yeah. I said, how is this for a predictable tuition policy? No increases. Right. And as yeah. long as I'm chairman, I'll tell you this, Mr. I'm chairman of the Higher Education Committee, Mr. Chairman, of the CUNY Board of Trustees, uh, there will be no tuition increase if I can help it. Well, then I hope that you and will I stay. Can, and I can't help it. You, you, then, as far as I'm concerned, stay on as chairman. <laughs> okay. Uh, because uh, the big problem, as you know, is because of the population, as the census reveals. Uh, we are a very wealthy city, but we also are a very poor city, and especially for <laughs> our students, who I'd like to keep the uh, tuition uh, without any increases for the four seeable future well, and, and even beyond that. I hope we can do that and I hope we can increase TAP as well. We're, we're having a thing called what I call family TAP. That is to say if you have two or three family members mm -hmm. in community at the same time, we're going to make sure you get m each one of them will get more TAP. That is to say if you qualify, I'll just take a number, if you qualify for a thousand uh, uh, dollars for TAP now, if a sibling or a parent or a child mm -hmm. comes into college, some a member of your family comes into college, then not only will your TAP uh, go up maybe to 1200 I'm making these figures up, but something like that, your TAP will go up a couple hundred dollars, but their TAP will go up a couple hundred dollars. Okay. So, so we want to encourage family members to come together to, uh, to uh, uh, CUNY, and, and that's another way of doing that. Okay. Good luck in your efforts. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you, here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You can reach us by email at our website, www.cuny.tv, or write to us at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016.